Way Out is brought to you by L&M. L&M unlocks a new world of flesh smoking pleasure every time you light up. And now, our host, Rual Dahl. How are you? Now, whether you know it or not, the female spider is a half-blind, savage carnivore who will eat any insect she can get a hold of, including the male of her own species. Quite obviously, this makes life a rather perilous business for the male spider, especially if he happens to have licentious tendencies. And in order to effect a mating and escape with his life, he has to be both ingenious and exceedingly agile. Well, what about the male human? Our graveyards are filled with men who are neither agile nor ingenious enough to get away with it. The play you're about to see is titled, I Heard You Calling Me. And here, for a happy change, two females concentrate entirely upon getting rid of each other. And the male gets away without a scratch, which is, of course, the way it always should be. It's way out. Start fresh with l and &M. Stay fresh with l and &M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with l and &M. That's all it takes. An l and &M, a light, and you unlock a new world of fresh smoking pleasure. You do away with dried out taste for good. The secret, Flavor Seal. l and &M's special way of moisturizing tobacco to seal in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. l and &M burns slower, smokes cooler. So try fresh tasting, best tasting l and &M with a modern miracle tip. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoke and pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with l and &M. Pack or box. Please. Yes, sir. Any messages for me? No, Miss Mansfield. I'll be checking out in about an hour. Would you get my bill ready? Certainly, Miss. Will you be requiring a car? No, I think I'm being picked up. Oh, uh, how long does it take to get to the London airport? Well, you should allow yourself about an hour, Miss. Thank you. Gravia 8609. Gravia 8609. Yes, madam. Hello? How are you? Aren't you going to call me? Frida, just a moment. Hello? The houseboy hasn't left yet. Where are you? At the hotel. I just got back. Listen, are you going to pick me up or shall I take a cab? Well, I don't know what time I'll be able to leave yet. And I have to go and pick up our airline tickets myself. You understand, don't you? George, we should leave here by seven. I know. Look, Frida, don't phone me here. The boy might pick it up and I'd rather not have reporters at the plane. Listen, I'll phone you when I know how long it's going to take me to pick up our tickets and get to your hotel. If I'm going to be late, you'd better go ahead in a cab. All right. Right, then I'll phone you in about, oh, say, 15 or 20 minutes. George, darling, I'm wearing it. What? Well, you know. I took it back and they offered the class. Darling, it's so beautiful I could weep. 
I'm glad you like it. I wish I were with you right now. I wish we were already in New York. Yes, well, I'll phone you. You're not having any 11th hour misgivings, are you? You know I'm not. All right. I'll wait to hear from you. That was fast. Hello? I know what you're up to. Who is this? I know what you've planned, but it won't happen. Who is this, please? Someone who knows all about you. <laughs> you must have the wrong extension. Room 707, Miss Frieda Mansfield. Yes? Of New York City. And a friend of George Frobisher. Look, who is this? Now, I haven't got time to play footsie on the phone, and I hate gags like this. Hello? Hello? You are not going to be allowed to destroy George Frobisher's marriage. You shall not take him from his wife and children, whom he really loves. I don't know what in the world you are talking about. You know, and so do I. But you shall never marry him, because there's been a change of plans. You are not going to America with him tonight, because you are coming with me. Gravy, 8609. Gravy, 8609. Yes, madam. Hello? George. Frieda, I said not to phone me here. I had to. Something's happened. What? Somebody knows. What do you mean? About us. We just had a phone call from some woman. Very strange, anonymous bit. Wouldn't leave her name. Well, what did she say? Well, in short, that I was not going to be allowed to break up your marriage. Who oh, what? Well, that's what I mean. Who? Could it possibly have been Monica? My dear, you know Monica's in Scotland with the children. Well, voice sounded rather faint. So it could have been long distance. Yeah, Monica hasn't the ghost of an idea about us. Anyway, it's not the sort of thing she'd do. How do you know it isn't? I happen to know my wife rather well after 15 years. She'd have come directly to me first. Well, then who else could it be? Somebody in your office? Oh, don't be asinine. I've never even phoned you from the office. No one there knows you exist. I've been very careful. Well, I certainly have. You think I've enjoyed stashing myself out of sight in this unfancy hotel and dining in those unfancy places? What else did she say? Well, I don't really remember. I'm still so mad. I mean, well, I was just so shocked I kept on saying, who are you? Did she hint that she wanted money or anything? No. Well, there was one strange thing, though, that made me think she might be some kind of a dangerous crank. At the end, she said, you are not leaving with him tonight because you're coming with me. What did she mean by that? Oh. Anybody's guess. Very nasty and threatening, though. Look, George, do you think you ought to come here? Nonsense. Look, if there really is anything to face, we'll face it together. Well, are you coming here or not? Yes, just as soon as I've been to the airlines. How long? As soon as I've been to the airlines. Listen, old dear. Don't lose your head. I'm sure this is just some ridiculous prank. Well, lots of laughs, but I'd like to get out of here soon.
Hello? Hello? Why did you telephone George? Why did you telephone George? Who are you? You leave George alone. Now look. If you bother me again, I'll have the operator trace these calls. I'll get the police. There won't be time for that, Frida. I'm on my way to you now. What do you mean? That you are leaving with me. The arrangements have all been made by Mr. Sanders at George's office. Mr. Sanders has made excellent reservations for us. And I shall be there to pick you up at 7 o'clock. Operator, that, uh, that last call, was that call waiting for me while I was on the phone? Big pop, madam. That last call, could you have left the switch open while I was talking to the Belgravia number? Uh, I'm afraid I don't quite understand which call madam means. The last call, a woman called me, she called me twice. Well, there must be some mistake, madam. There haven't been any calls for you. I have had two calls since I got in, a little after six. Oh, no, madam. You made two calls to Belgravia, 8609. I know that. But a woman called me twice. Oh, no, madam. There haven't been any calls for you this evening. I've been on the board all the time. There were two calls for Miss Mansfield in 707. I know who you are, madam. If there had been any calls for you, they would have been put through. Are you trying to tell me I'm out of my mind? Look, about ten minutes ago, a woman called me, and, and then again... I'm sorry, madam. There have been no calls for you. Now, I know the board has probably been very busy. I haven't been busy at all, and I know... Forget it! Get me? Belgravia, 8609. Again, please. Yes, madam. And listen, you are not to put any more calls through to me under any circumstances, unless it's a Mr. Forbisher. Yes, madam. to an L&M. You unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Do away with dried out taste for good. The secret, flavor seal. L&M's special way of moisturizing tobacco to seal in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. L&M burns slower, smokes cooler. And L&M's modern miracle tip means you get the cleanest, freshest taste possible. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Start fresh. With Fresh tasting, best tasting L&M in pack or box. Hello. There's your doctor, madam. George. Frieda, if you keep phoning me, I'll She's never... called again. What? It gets weirder all the time. She knew I had phoned you about her. Oh, Frieda, she couldn't. 
Well, she did. She warned me not to do it. She said to leave you alone. And then she said she was coming here at 7 o'clock. I'll come as soon as I can. George, wait a minute. There's something I must tell you. It is someone in your office. It couldn't be. It is. Now, who is... Forgotten the name. I'm so upset. Who? Samuel Sanford. Sanford. Sandys. Sandys. Who is Mr. Sandys? Sandys. I don't know. Well, she's. I heard her very clearly. She said the name twice. She said Mr. Sandys in George's office had made the reservation. Oh, Sandys. Yes. Oh, well, that's impossible. Sandys used to make our travel arrangements, but he hasn't been with us for years. Well, he's the one. He's the leak. Now, you've got to reach him and find out who this mad woman is. Do you know where to reach him? Hardly. He's been dead for 15 years. I say, Frida, are you sure you're all right? Well, don't you start. What? First the operator swore I didn't get those calls, and now you. Oh, look, old girl, you're, you're beginning to scare me now about yourself. George, I am not imagining this. How could I imagine Mr. Sandys? I must say, the whole darn thing's pretty peculiar. But I'm sure it's just some very cruel prank. Well, thanks a lot. What do I do now? Look, are you almost packed? Well, yes, almost. Well, I'll leave now. You get in a cab and I'll meet you at London Airport in an hour. I'll be there before that. Number, please. Give me the desk. Just one moment, madam. The desk, Mr. Burnley. This is Miss Mansfield in 707. Oh, yes, Miss Mansfield. I want a cab here in about five minutes. Well, I'll do my best, Miss, but it is the rush hour just now. I must have a cab before seven o'clock. I'll do my best, Miss. As fast as you can. And listen, you call me the minute that cab arrives and tell the operator not to put any more calls through whatever. Only when the cab arrives. Yes, Miss. If you don't get off this phone... We board the ship at Southampton tonight. And by the way, we have adjoining suites on A deck. I have our tickets with me. Now listen. Listen to me. If you come to this hotel and attempt to annoy me in any way, the police will be waiting for you in the lobby. Is that clear? Did you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Leaving the Winter Garden now, on my way. The police will be waiting for you in the lobby. Tell them to expect me then. Mrs. Thorne. Mrs. Rose Thorne. <laughs> Number, please. 
I thought I told you not to ring this room. I didn't, madam. Give me the manager. And sorry, but the manager is out at the moment. And give me the desk. Quickly. Quickly. Just run over, madam. The lady's engaged. Well, break in. Oh, we're not allowed. Break in! The desk, Mr. Burnley. Where's that cab? Well, I'm doing my best, Miss Mansfield. Well, hurry. And listen, if if a woman comes in the lobby, you're to ask her if she's a Mrs. Rose Thorne. Mrs. Rose Thorne. Yes, miss. What does she look like? I don't know. If any woman comes into the lobby, you're to ask her if she is Mrs. Rose Thorne. And if she is, hold her there. And then get the police. This woman's a dangerous lunatic. You, you've got to stop her from getting in that elevator. Good, miss. Well, how far is it to the Winter Garden Hotel? I think you must mean the Windsor, miss. No, I mean the Winter Garden! But Miss Wanfield, the Winter Garden Hotel was torn down many years ago. <laughs> getting into the elevator. That Mrs. Rose Thorne, she just called me from the lobby now. I assure you, no one has come in through the lobby. Don't lie, you're all lying to me. Oh, you're all right.
This is Mr. Forbish. I can't believe she's dead. What was it, Doctor? A heart attack? Unable to say at the moment, Mr. Frobisher. Death appears to have been instantaneous. The strange thing is there are evidences of virulent pneumonia. Pneumonia? But I don't understand. I was with her at lunchtime and she was perfectly well. Most intense I've ever known. In fact, I'd say both lungs seem to be full of water. It's almost as though she had drowned. Drowned? She was very agitated, Mr. Forbisher. And we wonder now, sir, if she might not have been, well, delirious. She was under the delusion that some woman had been telephoning to her, although, of course, we frequently assured her that there had been no calls. There were no calls? No, sir. And earlier this evening, about seven o'clock, she called down and asked us to stop some woman from getting onto the elevator. She thought that there was some woman in the lobby by the name of... Um, Rose Thorne? Yes, that was the name, Mrs. Rose Thorne. But that's impossible. She's written it down. Rose Thorne? But I never told her about... I never even mentioned the name. You know the name, sir? Mrs. Thorne was my mother. But I thought your name was Forbisher. I was adopted after... after my mother died. Mrs. Thorne is dead. She died on a trip to America. She was drowned. Drowned? Forty-nine years ago. She was on the Titanic. I have a maiden aunt in Norway who was actually rolled out of bed onto the floor three nights running by a ghost. But then she lives in what was once a very old trysting place. And about 400 years ago, they bricked up a naughty girl in the wall of that room. That sort of thing always produces a ghost. If your wife is extremely delicate and you tickle her to death, that will produce a ghost too. So you have to be careful. We'll have another one for you next week at the same time. Good night and sleep well. by Ernest Adler. This program was pre-recorded. Way Out is brought to you by L&M. L&M unlocks a new world of flesh-smoking pleasure every time you light up.